Today we will show you how to move a UR cobot without having one. And if you've never seen one, you will also learn how to move it. Welcome back to another Rebots episode. In this video, we will talk about virtual machines and simulating universal robots on their own software development kit. First of all, let's talk about the most well-known programs to virtualize operating systems in your machine. One is VMware Workstation and they have two versions. The Workstation Player is free, and the Pro needs a license, but has more functionalities. But for most users like me, the free version is more than enough. The other program is VirtualBox. This one is open source, and therefore free. But in my opinion, the performance is worse than VMware. It was just a feeling until I tried both softwares at the same time, making this video. Okay, so let's install both softwares. This will allow us to open another operating system in another window, such as Linux variants, which is the most common alternative, or even another variant of Windows. Maybe in the rare case, uh, you need to use Windows XP. So, usually what you do is download an image file, .iso, and install it in the virtual hard disk. But in this case, we will download Universal Robots URCAP Starter Package, which is an dot OVA file, a pre-configured image. This virtual environment on Ubuntu Linux is prepared to create new add-ons on their system to make it easier to program your tools. As you can see on their description, the starter package is a ready-to-go Linux virtual machining image. It includes Eclipse, URCAP SDK, and URSIM, which is the offline polyscope simulator, Maven, a build automation tool for Java and other necessary development tools. If the direct download link is not working, you can also connect through FTP and download the file. Now that we have the file, let's import it in both programs to see how it runs. So just follow the steps and start the new virtual environment. You can change some settings and add more CPU cores or more RAM if you want. Uh, but I'll just go with the uh, basic. It will take some time to import the files. I'll speed it up a bit. After finishing importing, a new tab will be created with a new file. It will be called Started Package, and you will just need to double click it. If you have hardware virtualization enabled, then you won't have any problems, but I forgot to enable it, so this error will come up. It even knows that I have an AMD CPU. Now, let's open VMware. Something similar will appear. Let's clear the screen a bit. Um, go into Player, File, Open, and then uh, select the Started Package. Here, we'll have to name it and create a path file where all the virtual hard drives will be installed. I created a folder called VM for virtual machines and then the name, I'll just call it UR as Universal Robots. Uh, just retry the error and it will import the files and packages. I'll do the same as before, speed it up a bit. And after that, there, you will have another tab, which is UR. Just double click it. And as you can see, I have the same error. It's because I have an enabled virtualization. So we will need to access the BIOS and enable this option. It is different between AMD and Intel processors. Also, to access the BIOS is different for every motherboard. Uh, in my case, it's F2. Sometimes it might be F11 or the escape key, or even delete. For Intel processors, it's easier because the name is uh, Intel Virtualization Technology. And for AMD, it's a bit more confusing, as you can see here. For me, it's a SVM. After enabling the hardware virtualization, you will need to add the software virtualization. So to enable this, just go to turn Windows features on or off, and then search uh, Hyper-V. Then select uh, the whole box and install. After restarting, you will be able to uh, use the virtual machine. Now, let me show you guys uh, what I said before about a VMware and virtual box. In this case, you will clearly see the winner and which one opens the virtual machine first. 
the software will start uh, on VMware first. This part is a bit sped up because the first time that you open it, it will take some time, even five minutes, depending on your processor. So here we have a clear winner. And without speeding the clip, it took two minutes more for VirtualBox to open the system. So here, if you're not familiar with Linux, uh, you have scripts.sh and you will need to run the start uh, urcm.sh. To do that, you will have to navigate into that directory. Normally, I would do it on the terminal with cd and then uh, the location, the path. But here, we will go with the navigation explorer and then open it and open the terminal in that folder. Then we will uh, write dot slash and then start ursim.sh. You can use tab to autocomplete as long as there's no other files that have similar names. In this case, you will need to write start up until the hyphen and then tab. If you only write st, and since we have other files that start with the word start, it will give you the options that are available if you double tap. So in the URSIM folder, you have two uh, Polyscope uh, software. One is for the CB series, which is older. As you can see, uh, the user interface, it's a bit, a bit less uh, worked. It's just a Java program without a skin. And later on, we will see the new Polyscope, which is uh, much prettier, I would say. So now that you have their virtual environment uh, for development up and running, you will be able to familiarize yourself with a real collaborative robot slash industrial, not like I suggested in the last video with a Lego or maybe a Elephant Robotics a small collaborative robot, which are more for commercial use. Although the Dobot one, it's also used in industrial standards. As you can see, you have no limitations whatsoever here. So you can simulate and do whatever you need to do, uh, run any program offline, uh, simulate or develop a new application for UR. And now let's open the new Polyscope. Well, it's the Polyscope that they use right now on their flagship robots, which is the E-Series. As you can see, the image is more polished and they change the icons and the buttons. As you can see, you are also able to simulate the robot, although it's a bit uh, flashy. So if you are epileptic, be careful. Now imagine that you had the tablet in your hands and you want to access the command prompt. So if you want to access the terminal, you will have to, you will need to press the keys Control Alt F2 and then uh, log in to the terminal. Now to go back to the user interface, you will need to control Alt F7. Here is an advantage of VirtualBox. When you close the window, you can save the state. You don't need to turn off the operating system. Now, if you wanted to try and simulate another robot, all you need to do is open the file instead of running it. So if we open it with getit, which is a notepad basically, you will be able to change the type of the robot. And lastly, let's talk about the main purpose of this virtual environment, which is the software development kit or UR caps. To do that, we'll need to open Eclipse. Here at the same time, I'll show you guys how to make a single program on the universal robot software. It's pretty simple since it's just uh, clicking on buttons, as you can see, all I did is uh, create a waypoint and then select the point that you want to reach and then just select OK and move the row to that point. And then uh, you can create another waypoint and set the waypoint. And then when you click OK, it will tell you that the robot is not in that position. So you can move the robot into the that point and then start the uh, program by uh, pressing the play button. Then it will loop uh, automatically, so you won't need to do anything. Here I will show you in the move section that the robot is moving back and forward. And now going back to the main point of this environment, what is a UR cap, you may ask? Well, it's like a driver package. 
it lets the robot interact with a third-party device, like a gripper, for example. But what does it do, really? Well, the UR cup adds additional buttons to the user interface. You wouldn't need to manually hardcode everything and activate inputs and outputs. For the end user, he will just uh, see another tab like the when we were creating a program with the movement. And instead of a waypoint, you probably have your buttons with the open and close gripper and you just need to click on them and they will be added to the script of the robot. I hope you liked this video and as always, please like and subscribe. And if you have any doubts, questions or suggestions, leave a comment below. See you in the next video.